Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, nightly update. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, day of trading. A lot going on today, as you can imagine, uh, between uh, the Fed minutes, between earnings, between NVIDIA after the close. Uh, we'll get to those uh, in a minute. Uh, but first, again, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Welcome aboard. The only thing we ask is if you like the content and you enjoy uh, the daily videos, all we ask is for a like, a like, share, uh, and subscribe to the channel. And all, all you have to do is just sit back, relax, and kind of, uh, you know, dissect the information. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, number one, uh, market continues to act uh, very, very well, uh, despite the red day. And again, to use the word red, maybe it's uh, kind of tongue in cheek, uh, Dow down. 62 points, the Dow, uh, S&P down nine, uh, the NASDAQ down uh, half of a percent or uh, 84 points. Uh, you had a lot of retail uh, numbers coming out uh, this morning uh, from names like uh, AEO, right? Uh, AEO and Abercrombie and & Fitch, uh, which had a nice, really nice rebound turnaround. Uh, Best Buy, I could have told you uh, Best Buy was gonna, was gonna miss their numbers. Uh, stock didn't didn't react that bad, but I, I could have told you Best Buy. I went to buy my kids a printer at Best Buy uh, Saturday. It was around a quarter to twelve. I was literally the only one in the store, and I was expecting. I don't know. I don't remember the last time I bought a printer, uh, but I was expected to pay what three four hundred bucks. There was a printer there. I think it was a Hewlett Packard. Uh, it was marked down from like three twenty five to hundred bucks. So uh, only one in the store, right? Only one in the store. Hundred bucks for a printer. Uh, I could have told you. So basically, you're seeing the same thing. Uh, look at Kohl's uh, numbers as well. Uh, again, you can see Wall Street and Main Street are completely disconnected. Don't let uh, the performance of the market, how strong the market is, uh, kind of take away or, or, or kind of resemble uh, what's going on in Main Street America. I, I believe they said that the average uh, household income is like $58,000, $60,000. So uh, tack on some inflation, high interest rates, and all that stuff. You can see uh, the retailers not uh, doing great, not not doing great uh, at all. That's why it's so amazing that uh, Target actually had a very very good quarter. It actually still looks really really good, uh, consolidating uh, consolidating its uh, earnings. But uh, again, we, weak retail sales uh, continue uh, to come out. Uh, we had the Fed minutes come out at two o'clock, and basically the Fed really gave no indication with the market kind of try to decipher from a last FOMC meeting that they were going to not only pause uh, interest rate hikes, but they're going to start to uh, start to take them down. Well, the Fed minutes read a little bit differently. Uh, really no indication of a rate cut that is imminent. Market actually did not do anything. It actually did not give back anything uh, on that, uh, on those Fed minutes, and actually held up very, very well. And the common denominator of uh, what we've been seeing on any any red days, and again, it hasn't been many red days uh, in the last three weeks. But uh, the, the common de common denominator uh, that's still going on is we're still putting in higher lows. Right? We never took out previous day's channel. This channel never took out this channel. This channel never took out this channel. So uh, the market continues to to do very, very well. Even news of Amazon, for example, and you see this uh, at the open, uh, word came, I think it was CNBC who reported um, that Jeff Bezos was selling, I think it was 1.7 million uh, shares of the stock, um, you know, whatever X amount of billions of dollars that is. Uh, initially, the stock got hit, and then in true fashion, the stock rallied literally uh, rallied about three dollars off its lows. Again, very very strong market. Depend, you know, it doesn't make a difference uh, what the news is. Very very strong. Uh, and the one name, the one name that we, if you watched the video last night, again, thank you very much for tuning in. If you watched the video last night, the the first thing I said today at Morning Strategy, there's only one stock I want to trade today. There's literally only one stock I want to trade because you know I'm getting a little bit uh, a little bit tired. You know, it's the day before. 
Uh, it's a day before the busy travel holiday. You know, I'm kind of starting to get into uh, holiday mode, right? Holiday mode. I'm like many of you guys. I am hosting uh, Thanksgiving on Thursday, so I'm thinking, oh my god, my wife's gonna give me a laundry list of things to do on Wednesday. You got to clean. You got to buy food. You know, you got to buy. You know, pick up food and this and that and the other thing. So it's a whole big thing. So I was kind of in just like one mode. And we talked about this last night in the video. The options market uh, was was dictating yesterday. Uh, big, big call buying coming in. And despite the weakness uh, from the market, Tesla, and we'll get to the pivots in a second. Well, literally pivot, because uh, this is literally the only trade I took today. Um, it reclaimed the 50-day moving average. It had a really nice run. Give us a really, really awesome run. Uh, right from the word go, reclaim the previous day's channel and just gave us like a five and a half dollar move, literally in about you know seven to ten minutes. Great move, and again, I still have a a runner from the the two thirty eight uh, two thirty eight range. Uh, yeah, it's holding up here a little bit, holding up here a little bit. So we'll see what happens there. But it really does show you uh, the importance of uh, being prepared, the importance of you know, at least in my opinion, uh, being um, you know, being uh, familiarize yourself with, with a group or a group of stocks that he could continuously trade over and over and over again. You know their personalities. You don't care what happens with the rest of the market as long as you are dialed in on the technical levels of certain stocks. And yesterday, uh, we, you know, I, I think I made a pretty good case of what happens uh, if they reclaim the 50-day moving average. It did so today, put up again nearly a $6 candle. And now let's see uh, what happens. And what happens next on Tesla is if it can hold, right? If it can hold today's range for tomorrow. You see the top of the range here, guys? You see the November 15 highs? This is literally the last supply zone, right? Literally the last supply zone. They were still coming uh, very aggressively today for the 245, the 250s. We saw 260s for next week. Guys, there's literally one hurdle left in this trade, okay? Whether it comes tomorrow, it doesn't come at all. That's what she said. That's what I said. Um, but the point is eventually, right? Eventually. If Tesla can get rid of this last supply zone right over here, boy, oh boy, look how much room we have here. So uh, next couple of days is going to be super and duper important for Tesla. Uh, I will definitely be adding more on the top of the range here because we have all airspace. What all this was here was a channel break to the next channel, channel break to the next channel. Now we have one channel left and hopefully Tesla could get really, really going. Uh, you know, it's actually holding up here uh, after hours. We'll get to the video in a second. Uh, but again, one, you know, it was basically one and done. It was a Benson and scenario. Maybe that's not the best example in the world, but you kind of, guys kind of get uh, my point. So let's talk about the big uh, story uh, after hours. Uh, that is NVIDIA, right? That is NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA, again, just to, just to kind of rewind. Uh, and by the way, I came in long. I came in, I had a runner on NVIDIA yesterday. I had a $5 runner on NVIDIA yesterday, which I got stopped out break even today. But Great trade yesterday on NVIDIA. Um, but anyway, uh, so NVIDIA has this big, big run, 115, 120 points uh, off, its, uh, off its lows. Uh, they came out with earnings. The numbers actually looked really good, right? They beat on top, bottom line. Um, I think the revenue tripled. Like, everything was good. I mean, every single, I'm just reading it here, like, every single metric uh, was beat. I, I think they, they guided higher. Like, everything uh, stock right now, right now, right now, literally right now, after going up first, then going down first, stock right now, and right now it's 5 o'clock Eastern time, okay? Uh, stock is currently down about three points, okay? It's about three points. You'll see the whole big mishmash here. It's only down three points, uh, which is, again, it's going to change by the time uh, you guys are going to be watching this video. By the time you guys are watching this video, uh, NVIDIA is either going to be like at 520 or it's going to be like a 460, right? Because uh, the conference call is going to be in a little bit, and we're going to see the true reaction of NVIDIA uh, after the conference call. So by the time you watch it, like I said, I'm guessing it's probably going to be like either 510 or 470. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm just recording the video now. I have to go uh, drive my kids to basketball, but the point is we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow. The good part about it is we know going into tomorrow's session, you know, I'm going to watch both sides, right? No matter what the conference call says, we're going to be ready for both sides tomorrow. You know, we have the bottom of the channel here, right? The bottom of the channel here, which represents the five-day moving average, which was a low from five, six days ago. And we're going to use the top of the range here that we saw 
uh, after hours today. So something will give us a trade for tomorrow. Okay, at some point, it'll give us a trade to tomorrow. The question is, where is it going to be after the conference call to be determined? There's no reason to guess. We're prepared tomorrow for the upside in the video. We're prepared tomorrow for the downside in the video. All it just needs to uh, confirm. Other than that, you know, other than that, market continues to be uh, pretty healthy. Like I said, um, you know, NASDAQ continues just to grind higher no matter what's going on. Even in the initial reaction today, when the video went down initially 15 points, uh, you know, stocks were down basically 50 cents a dollar. So it really does show you uh, how individualized this kind of latest V-shaped recovery uh, bull market is. It's just, it's just super duper uh, explosive and sellers are comfortable at levels. Again, can that change going into tomorrow's session? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Again, we're trading day to day. We're trading trade for trade. We're not, nobody's trying to predict uh, what's going to happen three weeks from now, let alone, uh, you know, let alone two days from now. We're just trying to win our interval for tomorrow. Uh, and again, if you look at a lot of names, you're not going to see explosive setups just because everything had such a big run. Uh, but you are seeing a lot of value uh, going into tomorrow's sector in different uh, in different uh, uh, sectors, right? Uh, let me give you guys some ideas. Uh, Target, again, is holding up incredibly well, right? Really, really well. Doing incredibly well here. Uh, it just needs to take out earnings highs for this thing to start waking up. Look at AIG, obviously, in the financial space. Uh, looking, you know, pretty good, right? Looking pretty good as well. You know, nice looking chart on AIG. Again, AIG is not something that I'm going to trade, but again, to each his own. You know, who might I tell you uh, what looks bad or good? If the market kind of continues, uh, shakes off NVIDIA's earnings, look at Google, right? Look at Google. Only reason why Google stopped a couple of days ago was this linear regression line. This looks, you know, this, this looks uh, ready to go. But obviously, the one that, again, uh, I want, again, I have a runner uh, overnight uh, from, the two, uh, from the 238 breakout, uh, 238, excuse me, 238 reclaiming the 50-day moving average. Where I want to add is Tesla. I mean, that's the one I want to add, man. Uh, again, I'm hoping uh, it shakes off uh, weakness, uh, if there is any weakness in the morning, and starts attacking this top of the range here. Because boy, oh boy, if we could, again, guys, if we can close above the 100-day SMA, it's, look, look, guys, there's, no, there's literally no supply until 285. Again, it's not going to get there in one day. But boy, oh boy, that's what you want to see. You want to see airspace. If you ever watched, uh, if you ever watched uh, the PS60 workshop, or you know, or, or been kind of in, in our webinar or anything, there's something called the Barry Sanders effect, and which basically means, if all you guys who are uh, old football fans or not football fans at all, but there was one of the greatest running backs of all time was Barry Sanders, and he played on absolutely one of the worst offensive lines. Uh, during you know during that time with the Detroit Lions, and he would you know you'd you'd he'd have a game you know, one carry, two yards, two carries, five yards, three carries, nine yards. And then next thing you know, the, the hole would open just a little bit and he would take it 80 yards to the house, right? To the touchdown. And that's exactly what Tesla's doing, right? Here it is, you know, here's your one carry, three, four yards, another carry, two yards, another carry, three yards. And here's your last line of defense. We just need that hole to open up here. And Mr. Barry Sanders is gonna take it right to the house. We'll see, you know, we'll see. I hope it happens, uh, but we will obviously be, be prepared uh, if nothing, obviously, I'm going to use break even as my stop uh, for tomorrow. And if you look at uh, if you look at our uh, watch list, literally our our watch list uh, for this morning, I literally had one, two, three, four pivots, four pivots, three of them didn't confirm. This was the one right here, two thirty seven forty uh, needs to build. This was literally my only trade of the day. And honestly, what else do you need? You had nearly a six dollar move uh, in five seven minutes. Again, this was the whole pivot, right? Here was the whole pivot. Just went absolutely nuts, and this is the highest close in the whole formation. Hopefully, Tesla does what I hope it's going to do in the next couple of days so we can get some pretty big airspace uh, above us. Other than that, again, we're waiting for uh, NVIDIA's uh, conference call. Uh, a lot of people are going to be off tomorrow. A lot of people are going to be traveling tomorrow, uh, a day ahead of uh, Thanksgiving. Again, we are closed on Thursday and uh, is a half a day on Friday. So let's see uh, how much value we have tomorrow. Obviously my focus continues to be Tesla and I'd like to see where we can get the value tomorrow on the video, whether it's long or short. Guys, have a great, great day. Have an awesome uh, Wednesday. Have an awesome Thanksgiving in case you guys are off tomorrow. And with God's help, I'll see you all again tomorrow. Take care.